Hello everybody, this is Dr. Tani Isa, professor of pathology. I make these videos for all medical students. Hope someone may find it helpful. We talk about syphilis. Today we are going to talk about neurosyphilis. So what is neurosyphilis? Neurosyphilis is a manifestation of the tertiary stage of syphilis, and it occurs in only about 10% of individuals with untreated infection. In neurosyphilis, you may find meningovascular syphilis, or parenchymatous neurosyphilis. So what is parenchymatous neurosyphilis? Parenchymatous neurosyphilis include tibis dorsalis and paretic neurosyphilis, or we call it general paresis of NC. In tibis dorsalis, you may find selective destruction of the posterior column of the spinal cord and posterior nerve roots. And in paretic neurosyphilis, you see degenerative changes in frontal and parietal lobes of the cerebral cortex. So tibis dorsalis is mainly a disease of the spinal cord. And paretic neurosyphilis is mainly degenerative change in the cerebral cortex. So the three major patterns of CNS involvement in syphilis are meningovascular syphilis, tibis dorsalis, and paretic neurosyphilis. Affected individuals often show incomplete or mixed pictures. Most commonly, the combination of tibis dorsalis and paretic disease, and we call this tibopariesis. Infected with HIV are at increased risk for neurosyphilis, particularly as an acute syphilitic meningitis or meningovascular disease. And of course, you know this is because of the impaired cell-mediated immunity in these patients. And uh, the severity and rate of progression of the disease seem to be accelerated in those patients with HIV, and this is possibly for the same reason. Meningovascular syphilis. In meningovascular syphilis, uh, there you may see meningitis, inflammation of the meninges, which we call it meningitis, and vasculitis. And this is syphilitic vasculitis or syphilitic arthritis, and it affects the cerebral and spinal vessels. So it is basically it is meningitis and syphilitic arthritis of the cerebral and the spinal vessels. So uh, this meningitis and meningovascular syphilis, it is a chronic type of meningitis because syphilis is a chronic disease. So you expect to get a chronic type of meningitis. And this chronic meningitis may lead to nerve compression, uh, either a cranial or peripheral nerve. And the arthritis, syphilitic arthritis, leads to proliferation and swelling of the, uh, the endothelial cells uh, with narrowing of the lumen. And the lumen may be obliterated, and we call this obliterative end arthritis uh, or Hobner's arthritis. And you may also find gamma in the meninges, which may extend to the parenchyma, cause cerebral gamma. So meningo in meningovascular syphilis, you will see chronic meningitis, obliterative end arthritis, and cerebral gamma. Chronic meningitis usually involve the base of the brain and the convexes of the brain and also the spinal leptomeninges. And it leads to cranial and peripheral nerve compression. Obliterative end arthritis or Hobner's arthritis. Here you can see the vessel with swollen endothelial cells and inflammation of the wall. And this inflammation of the wall leads to a, a, a defective defect of the media or weakness of the media and adventitia. And you can see this uh, perivascular cuffing of lymphocytes and numerous plasma cells. This is brain with perivascular lymphoplasmacytic inflammation. In a case of meningovascular syphilis, this is the end arthritis obliterans. The, the vessel will be narrowed and narrowed until it get obliterated. And this luminal narrowing will lead to tissue ischemia. And it also predisposes to cerebrovascular thrombosis, vessel occlusion, and infarction. Here you can see the vessels are occluded by thrombosis, and this is the area of infarction. This is infarction, 
with dense chronic inflammation of the leptomeninges and this involvement of the vessels. And here you can see the reactive astrocytes. This is a case of meningovascular syphilis showing this area of infarction as a result of obliterative and arthritis. Meningovascular syphilis usually occur on the average seven years after the initial infection. And the most common presentation is a stroke syndrome in a relatively young adult. And this stroke syndrome involves mainly the middle cerebral artery. This is the most common, followed by the basilar artery, and this is the second most common. This is the middle cerebral artery, right middle cerebral artery infarction. The, this is the most common middle cerebral artery infarction followed by the basilar. This is right middle cerebral artery infarction and it may occur in the left. And there is usually subacute encephalitic prodrome is usually there with headache, uh, vertigo, insomnia, psychological abnormalities, personality changes, emotional liability, decrease the memory. All these may be due to the gradual ischemia of the tissues and it is followed by um, the progressive vascular syndrome. This is left middle cerebral artery stroke. And you know, uh, meningovascular syphilis, this is MRI show acute left lenticular striate infarction. And here you can see the absence of the left middle cerebral artery. This is the middle cerebral artery, just to refresh your knowledge to know the area supplied by the middle cerebral artery. Here is the middle cerebral artery with the red, and you know that 90% of all strokes occur with the middle cerebral artery. So it is middle cerebral artery stroke forms 90% of all strokes and it is the largest of brain arteries and it supplies most of the outer surface of the frontal, parietal and the temporal lobes of the brain. This is also the supplied by the middle cerebral artery. This is the basal ganglia. So it supplies the basal ganglia. And that is why when there is middle cerebral artery um, stroke, you may see contralateral hemiparesis and hemisensory loss and homonymous hemianopsia. What is homonymous hemianopsia? It means a visual field loss on the same side of both eyes. See, this is Paris as seen with the left homonymous hemianopsia. This man, he can see only the right half, the right half with both eyes, the right half of the field, while the left half is lost. This is a left homonymous hemianopsia. And if the lesion is left-sided, if the left middle cerebral artery is the one involved, uh, you will see aphasia. What is aphasia? Aphasia is difficulty in speech or loss of speech. This is because you know procus area and ranks area, those are in the left cerebral hemisphere. While if the lesion involves mainly the right middle cerebral artery, you may not see aphasia, but you may see a special neglect and poor motivation. This is meningovascular syphilis with the, this is a stroke of the basilar uh, artery. This is the second most common, the basilar artery. And here you can see medial pontine. This is pontine acute infarction in the distribution of the basilar penetrating artery. And here you can see this is the basilar and this is the positive string sign across the stenotic segment of the basilar artery. Basilar artery is the second most common artery involved. Here you can see a case of, many, of uh, syphilis, and this is syphilitic affection or vasculitis of the posterior circulation. And here, what, what is the result of this stenosis in these vessels? This is midbrain infarction.
Here is a beautiful large symmetric infarcate in the heads of the caudata uh, and, and anterior limbs of the internal capsule and basal ganglia. And here is the cause. You can see aneurysm in the anterior communicating artery. You know when the vessel, uh, with, uh, when the media and adventitia are weakened, there is secular dilatation of the vessel form this secular aneurysm. This is a solitary spinal dural syphilitic granuloma, and you know syphilitic granuloma, we call it gamma. Syphilitic granuloma is called gamma, and it is like uh, any granulomatous disease, but with numerous plasma cells. Uh, this was uh, solitary spinal dural syphilitic granuloma, clinically mimic spinal meningioma. These are the scattered granulomatous nodules, and here this one is magnified. You can see the granuloma is formed of uh, mononuclears, mainly uh, macrophage, lymphocytes, and very numerous plasma cells with multinucleate giant cells and surrounded by a fibrous tissue, scanned fibrous tissue. Here's more fibrous tissue. This is cerebral gamma. This is cerebral gamma, and you can see this ring, this uh, ring enhanced lesion with substantial edema in the right temporal lobe. This cerebral gamma. Uh, this is immune staining for a case of meningovascular syphilis. You can see you, we used uh, this uh, anti treponema pallidum antibody stain. Just to see to the treponema pallidum, you have to make anti-treponema pallidum antibody steam. And this is the treponema pallidum, can be seen here. And this is the this H and E stain to show the gamma. Here is the gamma, accumulation of mononuclears with numerous plasma cells and with central necrosis. And here you can see the uh, vasculitis affection of blood vessels and end arthritis of the trans here is the vessel is nearly occluded and this perivascular coughing of uh, lymphocytes and plasma cells you know that the immune system is not efficient in cases of syphilis because you can see the disease progress from the primary stage to the secondary stage to tertiary stage. And even in the tertiary stage, though the organisms are not so numerous as in primary and secondary stage, but you still can find the organisms still present in the tertiary stage. Parenchymatous neurocephalus. Tibus dorsalis. Tibus dorsalis is the result of damage by the spirochetes to the sensory nerves in the dorsal roots and the dorsal root ganglia with corresponding atrophy in the dorsal column of the spinal cord. This is the spinal cord and this is the dorsal root and this is the dorsal root ganglia. And here, here is the, there is damage of the sensory nerves, both axon and myelin. The axon and the myelin are uh, damaged, and this will lead to corresponding atrophy of the dorsal column of the spinal cord. This is the dorsal column. Here you can see the dorsal column of the spinal cord. And as a result of this atrophy of the dorsal column, this patient will, will feel loss of position and vibration sense below the level of the lesion. So if this is the level of the lesion, so all this area, you will find loss of position and vibration sense. And uh, this patient, if stand with the feet together with closed eyes, uh, he will fall or swing. And uh, this is this um, th this may, uh, used to uh, test the patient by Romberg test. We will talk about this.
What is the manifestations of tibis dorsalis? Impaired joint position sense with the resultant ataxia called locomotor ataxia. This is locomotor ataxia. What is locomotor ataxia? It is the neurologic form of tertiary syphilis characterized by deficient sensory and neuromuscular coordination along with diminished reflexes affecting mainly the limbs of the body, the legs and the hands. Locomotor ataxia is the inability to precisely control one's own bodily movement. It is this. You can see here, this is a locomotor ataxia. Persons affected with this disease may appear to walk like defective robot or otherwise move like malfunctioning machinery. That's to say in a herky-jerky up and down kind of rhythmical but non-fluid manner. Romberg test. Romberg test is used to uh, as a test of the body sense of positioning, proprioception, uh, which requires healthy functioning of the spinal column of, of the spinal cord. The test depends on the fact that uh, for, a, for, a, for a patient to feel balance in his space, he needs three, three senses, proprioception and uh, vestibular system and vision. And if there is a lesion in the dorsal column of the spinal cord, this patient will lose proprioception. But he still can uh, feel, can attain balance in space by using the vestibular system and his vision. So the patient is asked to close his eyes and then to see if there is a swinging or there is a imbalance or fall down. This means that uh, the dorsal uh, column of the spinal cord is affected. There will be also loss of pain sensation in the skin and the joint, and this will lead to damage of the joint, and we call this Charcot's joint. And Charcot's joint occur in other diseases. It can occur in leprosy, in peripheral neuropathy, in alcoholism, in other diseases, not only in syphilis. And it is a neuropathic arthropathy, progressive destruction arthropathy, secondary to neurological condition, usually minimal or no tra trauma. And it is usually accompanied by uh, these tabetic ulcers, ulcers in the food because of loss of pain sensation. So the patient may damage his foot because he doesn't feel because of this loss of pain sensation. This is the knees of a patient with tibis dorsalis. The knees may also be affected. And this dislocated toys also occur in tibis dorsalis. What are the other signs and the symptoms of locomotor ataxia? Transient lightening pain is common in patients with tibis dorsalis. The, uh, lightening pain of the legs and the progressive loss of muscular coordination leading to clumsy stumbling gait and uh, loss of pain sensation, loss of limb position and temperature and partial or complete loss of bladder and bowel control. There's triad characteristically for tibis dorsalis. Uh, tibis dorsalis is characterized by a triad of clinical symptoms, namely gait unsteadiness, lightning pain, and urinary incontinence. Argyropersum pupil is a classical eye finding in tibis dorsalis. This is, and also in general paresis of insane. Uh, it is bilateral asymmetrical involvement. It is a small irregular pupil this with preserved vision, but this pupil uh, does not react to direct light. You know, if we put direct light on the eye, the pupil contract to protect the retina. This is normally the pupil contract. In this case, the pupil does not contract. There is loss of light reflex. But near reflex is okay. Near reflex is positive. So this pupil reacts to accommodation but does not react to direct light. It is negative for direct light. What is the site of the lesion? It is pre-aqueduct 
aqueductal near the aqueduct of Silvius and the midbrain. Microscopic picture in tibis dorsalis. In tibis dorsalis, there is loss of both axons and myelin in the dorsal roots, here in the dorsal roots, and also in the ganglia, with corresponding pale and this pallor and the atrophy in the dorsal column of the spinal cord stained for myelin. Thank you so much.